a lot of biographical plays uh, on in recent years in theatre, and um, perhaps uh, in, Ignatius of Loyola was a relatively surprising choice for one. So why? Um, why? I've always been interested in the Jesuits. I've always been interested in Ignatian spirituality, and. Um, he seemed to me, although that wasn't the, 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 the idea when I started it, but he seemed to me to be rather a, a kind of countercultural character, a kind of radical, revolutionary uh, character, both in terms of uh, his desire to change the world, but the desire to change certain aspects of the church and certain aspects of the kind of conservative aspects of the church. And that kind of chimed with a certain kind of experience <laughs> that I'd had. I'm just interested in those kinds of personalities because they're, they're a kind of symbol against, uh, against which opposition can kind of um, gather and uh, and they're, they're, they're troublemakers and they shake things up and I, I've just always had a bit of a soft spot for a maverick genius, you know. Another comparison um, some people will make apart from um, appropriately the uh, Catholic football man, Jose Mourinho, but um, he's um, the current Pope. Um, Pope Francis, the first Jesuit Pope, and I think a lot of people, when they read the play or they um, see it, will think that it's written directly in relation to him, because there are so many parallels. When your Inigo, Ignatius Loyola, is saying, um, get rid of this snobbery, get rid of this bureaucracy, um, get rid of these riches, it is, uh, and indeed being branded a troublemaker and uh, fearing that something may happen as a result of taking on this establishment. Yeah. It's all there, it all relates to Pope Francis. Now, there seemed to be some sort of strange celestial delay of okay, getting a play on, and then suddenly you kind of watch the, the Christmas message, uh, this normally very bland message to the courier that he uses as an ambush, really, to to wake them up and say, listen, things have got to change. You really got to, and and yes, going into rehearsals and working on the current draft and everything. Uh, this is Ignatius who goes to Rome, who uh, who wants to change the establishment, who wants to change the Vatican, and wants to make things different. He was a reformer, very much so. And the idea that a Jesuit is pope would have been um, unheard of for 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 the early Jesuits. No bishops, no nothing, no, because they wanted to remain radical. There was a contemporary letter, I think, Javier Francisco, St. Francis Saviour, as we call him, was, was, was very, very, and Ignatius as well, and the letters to each other were very aware about uh, staying. I mean, words like radical and untainted are used. Uh, and so certainly, yes, that the initial project was that because of the, uh, the kind of governing um, culture of the time of the Vatican, <coughs> which was obviously very corrupt, um, they didn't want to be tainted by that. They wanted to initially uh, not even have any rules and regulations at all. I mean, they were almost like proto-hippies. They just wanted to go to Jerusalem and live lives of service and help to other people in total obscurity, which gives the lie to the idea of him being this kind of empire builder and this kind of... And even then he decided uh, later on to, when they were forced to pretty much... Uh, have rules and regulations. They still wanted to keep it very, very minimal. But certainly, being priests, being bishops, cardinals, and pope would have just been something that was. And it's just very interesting, and, and, and some strange, you know, process of uh, providence or something that Ignatius is coming to Rome again.